by whatever means anybody might describe it. If you say, some people say, politics is about me, let them try it and see. There is nobody that can read any election where he is not popular. And by whatever means we come to this place, unless we are elected by some people, certified by another constitutional body to be senators of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. This is equivalent to what, when he was in service, was called Armed Forces Ruling Council, Supreme Military Council, or Provisional Ruling Council, of which God that made him didn't elevated him to the rank of that position when he was in service. For a military officer, or for somebody that comes from an elite court, a profession that is grounded on discipline, to do this kind of things, I think, is quite unacceptable. And we need to tell the Controller General that if he wants respect from us, then he must respect this institution. Now, to now say that unnecessary tension, I want to put it in very, very clear terms, that the tension is quite necessary. The tension that is generated by this thing is unavoidable, and he must, and he must, he must listen to the people of Nigeria. Recently, he introduced the issues of uh, rice importation. This process put our people in there, very, very there, very difficult condition in this country, Mr. President. We know what is, well, what, what is going on in, the, in our respective constituents. And for somebody to sit down, Mr. President, government is not about all making money. Government is about the welfare of people. If our people cannot feed, if our president can respect everybody, if our president will open his doors and listen to people, I don't see why and how any appointee of the government will look at people in this kind of chamber and say we are making noise. That is unacceptable and we cannot accept it. Mr. President, the issue of custom papers, like I said when this issue was read the other day, we all cannot be custom officers. I'm not a custom man. I don't know what a, a, a fake a custom paper a, a look like. I don't. And if I buy a car from a dealer that is known, that is not fictitious, and somebody stop me on the road and say my, do, uh, my, my papers are fake and impound my car, maybe taking my children to school or anywhere, I don't think that is right by any definition, be it spiritual or any law uh, 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 known to man. Mr. President, I respect the controller of custom, quite frankly, I put him in a very high intervention. But I want to tell the controller general that he needs to go back and consult his own, uh, <clears throat> his own conscience by saying because all the issues around his uniform centered around just one thing. As somebody that wore military uniform, he cannot go back and wear paramilitary uniform. I want to remind him, all the men and women seated around him in that headquarters are praying, are doing everything under the sun to be what he is today. Granted, he got it without lobbying or without asking for it. But he should know that it is God. God has seen everybody and made him a controller of customs. He should be grateful to God. And those men and women seated there are not all of them thieves. There are a lot of people that have integrity, some even much more than him. The only difference is Nigerian system, uh, through the uh, instrumentality of God, gave him the opportunity to rise to the rank of a governor, where he was first known, then next as Controller General of Custom. Mr. President, in summary, I want to say these two issues, the issue of rice importation, or whatever it is called, the issue of this custom uh, uh, papers is quite necessary. That is why we are here. We are going to defend it. We are going to raise it, and we are going to question it. 
and we have the right to do so. Our people are suffering, and we cannot sit down and fold our arms to look at somebody, a rubbish, the collective effort that we all put to bring this government, this very government, into being. For that reason, I want to move that the custom uh, controller general retract without missing what this letter he has written to this body. Otherwise, we should go ahead and apply the full sanction provided to us by the highest uh, a document of the land, that is the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. I so submit to Mr. President. Senator Sekibu. Mr. President, and my distinguished colleagues, I am Senator George Thompson Sekibu, COM. Mr. President, the National Assembly, the way I know it, is the first arm of government, and then followed by the executive and the judiciary. We are to make laws for peace, order, and good governance of this country. We are also giving the power to carry oversight on the laws we have made whether they are being followed appropriately or not. And then we are giving instruments to work with, our standing orders and also the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. As an institution, not as individuals, we are not supposed to join issues with individuals in the other arms of government. Our whole is based on resolution, give a directive on what we want to happen. And if that does not happen, we are also guarded either by our standing rules or by the Constitution. So I think what is before us now is a constitutional matter. It has gone beyond a con con general of uh, customs and the Senate. It's a constitutional matter. And that is why to Section 89 of the Constitution and read it for once and then explain why I bring that section. Section 88, 89 of the Constitution. I will read all. One, for the purpose of any investigation under Section 88 of this Constitution and subject to the provisions thereof, the Senate or the House of Representatives or a committee appointed in accordance with Section 65 of this Constitution shall have power. A, to procure all such evidence, written or oral, direct or circumstantial, as it may think necessary or desirable, and to examine all persons as witnesses whose evidence may be material or relevant to the subject matter. B, to require such evidence to be given on oath. C, to summon, to summon any person in Nigeria to give evidence at any place or to produce any document or other thing in his possession or under his control, subject to, sub, subject to all just exception, and D, to issue a warrant, to issue a warrant to compel the attendance of any person who, after having been summoned to attend, fails, refuses, or neglects to do so, and does not excuse such failure, refusal, or neglect to the satisfaction to the satisfaction of the House or the committee in question, and to order him to pay all costs which may have been occasioned in compelling his attendance or by reason of his failure, refusal, or neglect to obey the summons, and also to impose such fine as may be prescribed for any failure, refusal, or neglect. And any fine so imposed shall be recoverable in the same manner as a fine imposed by a court of law. Two, a summon or warrant issue under this section may be served or executed by any member of the Nigerian police or by any person authorized in that behalf by the president of the Senate, by the president of the Senate, or the Speaker of the House of Representatives, as the case may be. Mr. President, when issues of this nature come up and it becomes affront between the Senate as an institution and a head of any agency, 
we follow the prescription of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Otherwise, we may be exchanging words, insulting an individual as an institution. An institution should not stand to insult another individual. Mr. President, in the city between 2007 and 11, something happened. The Committee on Petroleum Resources, headed by Senator Lee Maiba, then. then invited the then Minister for Petroleum Resources, named Wittel, to appear in a meeting. And he refused to come in two occasions. A warrant was served on him, and he was compelled to come. When, after he had come, he was given the cost of what the, the committee entails, takes to, to someone the first meeting, this was paid to the federal government coffers, not to the cities. So there are procedures. I know that even in my own committee, Committee on Solid Areas, then headed by uh, Mrs. Dejeni, Alice, refused to attend to our call. We passed a warrant, and she was compelled to come. When she came, we sat with her and forgot what we want to get with her. We didn't find her because it does not warrant for such a fan. So my suggestion is this. Instead of just coming through oratory adoration and making statements, maybe perhaps we may be either calling him names or all that, our duty is to direct him to come. If he refuses to come, we issue a warrant and compel him to come because he must obey this arm of government. Thank you very much, Mr. Senior President. Senator Jubiba, you have anything else to say? Mm -hmm. Distinguished colleagues, is this the view of the, of the... So I'll conclude that as moved by Senator um, Sekibo, that we, we invite him and demand them... Uh, <laughs> Push on again. Yeah, Mr. President. Mr. President. Mr. President. In line with Section 89 of the Constitution and the explanation I've given there to arise to move that this Senate compel using the processes of Section 89 to compel the CG of Customs to appear before the Senate on any given date we will approve here, as so moved. <laughs> Mr. President, to, uh, to appear tomorrow, the 16th of March, 2017, I so move. I rise. I've been recognized by the city president. I rise to say that every drop of blood inside me, I'm speaking. Please, please, on an occasion like this, Senator Goje, God bless you. This is not going to be where you are going. This is the Senate of Nigeria, and the Senate President has recognized me until he asked me to sit down, please let me talk. Senior yes. President, sir, I want to plead with their colleagues. I want to plead. I'm not second the motion. I'm opposing the motion. And I want to give the reason for opposing the motion. 
Okay, uh, okay. A second devotion. With amendment. With amendment. Keep quiet. This is democracy at work. Let me, they, they have put the question. Oh, oh, you didn't second. I did, yeah, you did, you did second. No, but did you second the motion? I was going to second with an no, amendment. Amend it first. Amend it. Okay, I want to amend first. How can you say no? This student has a right for amendment. Yes! 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 So, Sir did you, did you, you, you seconded, yes? Yes? In good conscience, if my colleagues will not allow me to amend, I will draw my second amendment. Let somebody a second. Yes. Yeah. That's why you can. Mr. President, very distinguished colleagues, I rise with very deep respect to second this motion. In doing so, Mr. President, I would like to also point out to the Nigerian public that this is not about the city of customs. It is not about us. It is about the law of our land. It is about our people. And I say this with deep respect because what is an issue here is the legality, otherwise, of harassing the ordinary people of Nigeria on the streets for matters that does not concern them. Mr. President, distinguished colleagues, I'm aware that the duty for the payment of duties are imposed on the importer and not the end user. If you buy rice, if you import rice, and I buy rice from you, it's not my business to know whether I pay import duty or not. If you buy vehicles and you put it out for sale and I purchase, it's not my business to know whether you pay import duties or not. The law is that it's the importer who pays, not the end user. So what we are trying to do is to make sure that we protect the ordinary people of Nigeria. So it's not about us. So we need to put it in proper perspective. So I believe the city of custom needs to come and explain to Nigeria, not just us, and Nigerians and their representatives, whether this is in accord with our law and whether it's in accord with common sense and whether this is the correct thing to do in the circumstance we found ourselves. So I second the motion. Distinguished colleagues, I put the question. Those in favor of motion as moved and second, moved by Senator Sekiba and seconded by DSP. That we said hereby compare the CG, custom, uh, Contract General of Custom, to appear before the Senate tomorrow, 16 March, 10 a.m. 10 a.m. To appear before the Senate 10, 16th March tomorrow at 10 a.m. on Friday. Those in favor say aye. aye. Those against say nay. Yeah, the eyes have it. Distinguished, distinguished colleagues, uh, first, of, first, let me just, first of all, let me, um, as stated by Senator Sekibo and also by Deputy Senate President, these, these actions that were taken by, by the Senate in my own view, could have been easily avoided if these institutions begin to respect the constitution that we all have sworn by and the process and procedures. And we do hope that what we're doing here, as we say, is not defending our time, it's then even times after us and before us, and to ensure that this Senate will definitely continue very hard to defend what we have all sworn to this constitution. And nobody is above the law, and we must show that, that nobody is above the law, so that the CD customer will make himself available 10 a.m. tomorrow morning and make his case. Leader of the Senate. Mr. President, distinguished colleagues, I move that the chair of progress. 
Come, Mr. Chairman, the civil college shall rise to second the motion that the chair reports progress. I so second. Okay. Distinguished colleagues, those in favor that will revert to plenty and report progress say aye. Those against say nay, the ayes have it. Distinguished colleagues, the Senate and the Committee of the Whole could not be briefed by the Controller General of Customs and Exiles on the proposed retrospective duty payment of vehicles in Nigeria. The Senate President read a letter from the Controller General of Customs on his inability to attend the Senate briefing. He further stated that the retrospective duty payment on vehicle in Nigeria has been suspended for further consultation. The Senate, in accordance with Section 89 of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria 1999, as amended, resolved to compel the Controller General of Customs to appear before the Senate on Thursday, 16th March 2017, in plenary at 10 a.m. Is this a true reflection of what transpired in the Committee of the Whole? Thank you of the Senate. Mr. President, very distinguished colleagues, the second order of the day is a motion requesting the Senate to consider the request of Mr. President C and C for the confirmation of the nomination of Mr. Ibrahim Magu for appointment as Chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, in accordance with Section 2, Subsection 3, of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission Act 2003. Mr. President, distinguished senators, the purpose of this motion on the order paper is for the request of Mr. President, CNC, to be referred to the Committee of the Hall for screening. Mr. President, distinguished senators, in order to carry out this exercise in conformity with our standing order 17, full of privileges, I will move two motions. First, I move that the Senate do resolve into the Committee of Hall to conduct the confirmation hearings. Mr. President, the Jewish colleagues arise to second the motion that the committee, that the Senate do resolve into the committee of the whole to consider the request of Mr. President. I so second. Distinguished colleagues, those in favor that the Senate do resolve in committee of the whole, say aye. Those against say nay. The ayes have it. Secondly, I move that the Senate do admit the special advisor to the President on National Assembly matters and the nominee and other EFCC officials into the Senate chamber. Uh, Mr. President, distinguished colleagues, I rise to second the motion that uh, the Senate do admit the special advisor to Mr. President on National Assembly matters and uh, the nominee, I so second, distinguished colleagues, uh, Mr. President. Thank you. Distinguished colleagues, those in favor of the motion, hereby moved by leader and seconded by the minority leader, say aye. Those against say nay. The ayes have it. Yeah. 
Seats, distinguished colleagues. <laughs> distinguished colleagues, we have before us Brian Magu, the nominee for the position of the chairman of the FCC. Brian Magu, you are welcome. I presume we've all got copies of the CV. Distinguished colleagues, as, as our practice, as a nominee will allow you to 